Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some hot takes. Why not? Uh, let's uh, look My at some hot My favorite part of the show. Uh, UFC fighters are properly paid. We all know the answer to that. No. no, we don't. Let's hear. No. What y'all saying? Hey, definitely. First of all, no way in hell you should be paying for your own medical bills after a fight. They don't pay after a fight. I thought they didn't get, like, uh, health care. When they don't get health care, it means, like, you know, like, if you work for a, a regular job or whatever and you want to go get your annual, you know, you want to go get your teeth clean, whatever the case may be, like... They don't have that kind of everyday insurance, meaning your oh, spouse, I your see. kids, they don't have insurance for their family. They would have to pay for it um, if they wanted to have insurance. But anything that happens in the fight camp or um, anything that happens after the fight or during the fight, they get mm. that gets so like if you break your leg, they're not like, hey, buddy, you have to figure it out. No, they're, yeah. that's all insured and anything in fight camp. So you get like long lasting brain trauma that happens like after you retire like four or five years, that's on you. You don't get, there's no healthcare for that, right? Essentially, yes, because how can you prove when the brain trauma happened? You can't. We don't know if that brain trauma happened when you were sparring, when you were a kid and you fell off a skateboard. Like, cause brain trauma doesn't just happen like, oh, it happened and now all of a sudden we're seeing the effect. Like we know that it happens years down the line, all of a sudden, you know, you can't remember what color your car is. Okay. Yeah, you I was know, just using that as an example. Do I think that, uh, but, you know, let somebody else. CJ, speak. They're properly play, uh, paid? I don't think so. You know, I wish, hopefully the sports develops within a years, and I say that because the sport's still young. Look at the UFC is, what, 30 years old? So hopefully that these guys are putting their, their lives and their bodies on the line that they can start getting paid like the NBA or NFL because this is a rough, tough, it's one of the hardest sports ever, you know? But I know it's oh. still young and they still got to pay their dues to, to get there. But properly, no. Like you, some are what, getting 10 and 10? So you're getting paid 10000 to show and 10000 if you win. Taxes, paying your coach, your travel. That's, yeah. It's, you know, and it's hard. And you get your ass beat. Mm. I just wish those, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's hard. That's it's hard. But it's that's hard. A good point. And, and we're just seeing, we're just seeing, you know, what happens in the cage. You know, mm. all of, I always tell people, everybody talks shit. I'm like, bro, you wouldn't even make the weight cut. You know, so I you wish they the could. Fuck no. So I wish they would be able to get paid. You know, more. I know the superstars mm. do get what they get. But, you know, the little guy that's on the bottom of the car, you know, at least to help their family out a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's a good point that you made about them getting their ass beat. Because I remember watching the car last week, and old boy got knocked out, and he was still trying to fight. Like, <laughs> hey, I got to get paid, baby. <laughs> yeah. Me a fat bag for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was over there trying to wrestle Mark Goddard. <laughs> hey, Mark Goddard got out of there as soon as... You see him flinching? Yeah. Like mm. somebody was trying to strike at him still? I was like, oh, man, I feel bad for him. What about you, Jace? Oh, please, go, Scott. I'm, I'm going to go on a rant. Oh, okay. About time somebody else <laughs> go on a rant besides me. Um, You know, for me, I, I did a video, which I'll probably be releasing it sometime this week, if not next week, Um, like a little short video, uh, like comparing the pay between the different companies. Um, and by far, you know, the UFC still pays more. Do I think that people are properly paid? I think we aren't privy to how much they're actually paid because they have a disclosed pay. So you may see like on MMA Junkie, it'll so sal show salaries and it'll say, oh, such and such got paid, let's say 250000 But they made well over that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but so there's a disclosed pay and then what that, you know, the commissions are told, but then there's they get paid differently. So we don't really know, like, how much they're actually getting paid. Um, for me, I still go under the belief of you signed a contract. You knew how much you were going to get paid. Yeah, um, yeah. 
and you still decided to come and do this here when you could have went somewhere else. In comparison to like one and PFL, um, some of their lower end contracts, I think one smallest amount to get paid is two thousand dollars. That's correct, two thousand dollars. Uh, PFL's lowest is I think is eight thousand uh, dollars. Bellator's, I believe, was the same. It was between like eight and and ten something like that. And the UFC is now their lowest is currently twelve. Twelve, um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so. Is it cool to get paid 12K? No, not really. But the problem will always be that 12K to me and 12K to Ch Marlon Chito Vera, who was coming from Ecuador, getting $12,000 in cash is a complete difference. You're going to have them people that's hungry. It's like, hey, I mean, like, you might not want this money, but they want that money because 12,000 USD mm -hmm. inside of Ecuador is, is a lot of money that you can really do something with. Is it fair? No, not necessarily. And without us having all the information as to how much money the UFC makes, what the actual split is, because these numbers that you hear that like, oh, that the fighters only get like 15% or 18%, we don't even know that to be true. That's just some shit that somebody said. Like, this is why I keep saying like everybody keeps repeating the same stuff. But like the reality is that we don't know because their books and their numbers are not disclosed. We don't know how much they're giving out to other people uh, or how much of the percentage of the gate the fighters are getting because it's just not, we don't have the information. Everything is hidden, locked up. And until we get that, who knows? Who knows if they're even in the red? I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? Like who knows if they're even in the green? I meant to say, we don't have any idea. Go. <sighs> I'm logging out. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> just to rebut your uh, comment real fast, we know they're not in the red for the simple fact of their parent company, Endeavor, you know, and they have to answer to stockholders. You know what I mean? And now finally, <clears throat> because they are now a publicly shared company, we're starting to finally get in some light on more of the books of the USC, you know, because you got to be accountable for and you got to have public books on some of this stuff. Is it going to depth and detail how we want? Absolutely not. <clears throat> Are fighters paid fair? Properly. Okay. Properly. Because even properly and fair are two different things. Properly, 100% yeah. not. Properly at the USC is kind of a microcosm of capitalism as a whole. You know, where you might have the CEO, you know what I mean, making 83% of uh, the revenue and then everyone else is split up, you know, making the last 17%, right? So, no, that's not properly. That's not a proper thing you do. Yes, it takes money to make money and to promote, but it also, like, we all, I think, pretty much agree that the grunt or brunt of the work is done by the actual fighters. I've been watching UFC long enough where I remember the disclosed pay of these guys were 1500 and 1500 At the end of the day, there's no way a UFC fighter should have to have a second job. Now, it's different if they just love that they do something. Shout out to Stipe, right? But when you actually have like a real time job, you know, working at a fucking coffee shop, uh, clocking tables, in. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So at that point, you know, it's not done properly. And these are contracted UFC fighters. There's no way. Um, I think that number one, and don't want to get too much and rant too long. We really need unions so that way they don't have this cloak and dagger not telling people what people are really making. Yes, we know the top fucking, again, a microcosm of capitalism. The top 2%, 3% of fighters are Gucci. They come out every day and say, yo, I, I, you know, I'm cool. You know what I mean? But that doesn't speak for, you know, the 97% rest of other people on the roster who are trying to scrape it together. You know what I mean? Trying to make things happen. Shout out to Tony Ferguson. Taking fights you don't want and or need to take because you got to get this money. Answer your question. No. Well said. Yes. Also with that, and I know it sucks, and we talked about this before, and you said these guys shouldn't have to do these things. These fighters, even the lowest level guy, needs to get on there, needs to get on Instagram. They need to get on TikTok. They need to get on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They need to do all these things where you can get self-promoted and make promote money themselves. on the side and promote their promote yourself. You know what I'm saying? You are your own brand. I know it fucking sucks and stuff, 
But there are people who are willing to pay you other than the boss person that you fight for, which also sucks. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But you got to hustle, man. Yeah, but you're really not your own brand as much as you could be because you're not getting your own sponsors. You know what I mean? You are you... getting your own sponsors. No, That's no, no, no. Go but... back to every Mike Chandler interview. His sponsors doubled. His money that he got from his sponsors doubled, even though he could not wear it inside the octagon because he's being seen by a larger group of people. That's what Mr. Dana White privilege is saying publicly. Is that true? Who knows? But if you're it talking about true, it's true. You, well, just wait, wait, wait. you just talked about you just talked about how you people don't know. So which one but is I, it? But people this was know coming they from don't Mike know. Chandler's mouth. Why would he lie? But you can clearly see the amount of people that he was sponsoring before, based on now the sponsorships that he's promoting now. I mean, he's not doing free promotion. I mean, so you think about like back in the day, right? Like John Jones was the first individual fighter to get sponsored by Nike, right? You can't Fire. even do that now. You can't do that. There's Reebok, you know, Venom, and there that's is not Nike, and there is Nike. But There's that's not Nike. true because Kamaro is sponsored by Puma. He can't no, wear Izzy, Puma Izzy. in the opt. Yeah, sorry. Izzy is sponsored by Puma. So he can't wear it in the octagon, obviously, or during fight week, but he still gets his stuff off. He still gets paid from Puma. You think that they would be getting paid the same amount of doing it in an Instagram reel, supposed to wearing it in the octagon where most of the eyeballs are going to be on you? Do, well, the, the difference is, do I think that they're making the same? No. However, they're still getting paid. It's not like you're going to get, not like it's going to be like this drastic change because Izzy specifically because you brought up nike and the whole puma thing like it's not just an instagram reel like he has like a full-on like line. little line thing that they do mm -hmm. with him you know what i mean he has different brands like these companies have different brands and even just to take it like away from like the big big stars there are other fighters who have like i think even um it might have been kevin holland who was talking about it kevin holland talks about the fact that like with his sponsors he's like you know the way that he sets up his sponsors is he's like hey after X amount of hours, I'm taking this down. Like if there's any, he talks about how to uh, market your Instagram page so that you're constantly making money off of your sponsors and not just leaving stuff up for sponsors, like old stuff like that. Like, so there are people who are business mm. savvy, who are taking yeah. advantage of, of these sponsorships. You know what I mean? I'm going to say this in closing and then I'll be done with it. Right. It's like one again, they could be maxing out potential deals because you are most, you have the most eyeballs on you when you're standing in the ring. That's the clip that showed on ESPN is you holding the belt up. And then number two, it still kind of goes back to the original point that I was making. Like I shouldn't have to have a second job, right? Americans, people, again, not to take a political, shouldn't have to have two or three jobs to make it. If I got one full-time job, right? And I ain't trying to wild out like, you should be good. So it shouldn't be on the onus of someone to have to make two, three extra side hustles when you work for a multi-billion dollar company. That's it. I'm done. But in that in that regard, right? Uh, so you think, let's take a look at the, the lowest person on this car that you don't know. Oh, Haley's on here. Um, she's from off a contender series. Oh, I think you're talking uh, about Eminem's daughter. No. No, Haley Cohen, right? She's never fought. She's from off a contender series. Um, you're saying that because she signed with the UFC, period, she should never, she should not have to work a job at all. She should come in making what fifty thousand a fight. Sure, why not? That what's the average American salary? Average American salary off the top of my head is forty three thousand. Fact check me on that. It's probably lower than that, bro. I'll say like thirty. Yeah, yeah, around 30, 32. Shit, 40 is on the good side of some, for some people. Or you know, you know, it, no, the 43 might be the average, like. might be the average American household that brings in. But together, I, I know 43 together. is a number. Mm -hmm. What we got, Scott Guy? Well, but, but uh, I, I hope so, they can get to a level like that. Maybe like the lowest person can get 50 racks. But you it know? could be right now. They're a multi-billion dollar company. They could get that right now. You know what I'm so, saying? Um, looking at it, 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 they break it down by age. Let me get this just in view a little bit more. And um, then, they, uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, who, who, who is this? Uh, what site is this for, just for people out there? Uh, this is from firstrepublic.com. The fuck is that? 
<laughs> don't know. But so the average age of 25 to 34 in the U.S. in 2022 was 50,000. From 20 to 24 years old, it was 36. I would say between 20 to 20 to 34 is like the average age of like your your newcomer into the UFC. Um, so 50,000. So you're saying per fight, Haley should be making $50,000 for her first fight into the UFC. Sure, why not? <laughs> hey, I'll fuck with it too, Jason. And pay how much do pay me no women attention. soccer players make? Shit, less than that, huh? It makes uh, twenty thousand around. I think it's what is it, like twenty, thirty thousand dollars that a professional soccer women's soccer player makes. I don't know. Uh, I will say the uh, what is it? The USSL is not a billion dollar company. I would say the WNBA is not a billion dollar company. You know who is a billion dollar company? The UFC. They were bought for a million. You don't know how much they were under because the Fertito brothers, they were under like 40 to 50 million dollars or something like that. So like we How, how do you know that? Much, uh just based off of what the come at what has come out of their mouths. Okay. So are we accepting what people comes out of people's mouths or no? <laughs> well, they come out and say that there's a disclosed pay, but they get paid more. So I mean, how is that not accepting what's coming out of their mouth? Mm. I'm just saying. So you're saying that they were up, and then they just decided, okay, let's just sell it for no reason. I well, I mean, again, not to go into the Eddie Bravo conspiracy realm. I think they sold the UFC because they know lawsuits are coming, just like it has been for the NFL. Um, you know, with with people um, getting together in unions to go after the NFL as far as like why people have died. And I think it's coming, and they they were smart to say, mm, we don't want this smoke. We want to get out of this game because the lawsuits are coming. And so with that logic, you're talking about the biggest. Endeavor is the biggest worldwide company, uh, marketer, whatever you want to call them, in the fucking world. You're saying they are aware of this information, and they were like, yeah, we're going to spend, what did they spend, $1.4 billion, $1.7 billion, something like that? No. On this company. I, I think it spent $4 billion. It, it was, was four or five crazy. billion. Yeah. 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 I think it they, they sold for more than Star Wars did. Yes, right? exactly. Um, so they seen that and they said, yeah, we're going to put X amount of billions of dollars into this company that's going to go in the shithole in the next X amount of years. That makes sense. These um, people who their only job is to be at the top and is to analyze these companies before they before they buy them out. And you're saying that they know this and they're like yeah, we're, we're still going to do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Because when you get companies that big, so you look at like an Exxon Mobil, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they are so big and have so much money. Number one, they'll keep you in court for 10 to fucking 20 years. Exactly. As the UFC is doing right now to uh, a lot of these union uh, fighters that's trying to be, uh, unionize. unionize the fighters. Mm -hmm. And they will just keep you in court. Litigation, litigation, litigation. And if they do have to pay out, what does it mean to them? It's a drop in the water. It's a drop in a bucket. So basically you're saying that the Fertito brothers didn't wouldn't have been able to have enough money to be able to pay out these. Correct. There's levels to this. No, you know. I agree. I mean, yeah, there's definitely <laughs> levels to it. Do I think that uh, a person who just came on to the scene should get paid $50,000 per fight? No. What okay, so and guys chime in on this as well. So I didn't know this is gonna turn into such a, a spicy topic. Um we found out the gate from the OT arena disclosed, right? Um was nine million dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the percentage of fifty thousand to nine million? But how many that. fighters? You had 30 fighters on the card. Yeah, and so, and you got to remember, they're still doing the the win pay bonus. So if I win, now I make a hundred thousand. What's a hundred thousand compared to nine million dollars? You're talking about like, but fifteen one, fighters. So that's one point five mil, or, or seven would have to win, right? Out of the fifteen, seven would have to win. I have no issue, and I think uh, CJ Damien chime in on this. 
Is there a problem with a 50-50 split from the company and fighters? But I think when you're saying that, because you said it's they sold, what, nine mil at the gate, right? That's, That's what they just the gate, not even the pay-per-view. It's just the gate. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we also got to take into part what they have to, you know, insurance for the building. For sure. The lighting, the ribs, sure. and all of that shit. So it starts sure. getting cutting down. You know for what I mean? Sure. So. Yeah. What but, is, the, but the thing is, going. once again, you know, the, the only point that I'm trying to make is because we're not privy to the actual deductions what's happening so we see nine mil and we're like oh man they should have been a 50 50 split like mm -hmm. you know 4.5 mil should have went out to to the fighter to the fighter but then, you, but then like you said you gotta account for travel you gotta travel for actual employees that are actually there that like aren't actual fighters that are doing that you gotta mm -hmm. account for hotel mm -hmm. stay you gotta account for the mm -hmm. amount that they pay just to rent the building lights rent. That. there's all different kind of stuff that goes Sound. into it but we don't have the information to be able to look at it and say, yeah, that makes physical sense. If you think about it, like Conor McGregor said when he went on the MMA Hour, he was like, hey, Francis, Francis was lit. Francis was at the PI the whole time while he was going through his through his disputes. Guess what? At the PI, this is why I think all fighters should move to Vegas if they can and, and, and be there because you get free food. Every single day, you get free training, you get free physical therapy, and Francis has been there living his best life for a whole year. <laughs> got his leg, got both of his legs fixed, all kind of physical therapy that would have cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hey, I'm all for it. Get your money. Like, do your thing. Go inside here and use up these people. You know what I mean? But it's like, we don't account for that. Then they have the, the PI that's inside of Shanghai. We don't know how much money is being spent on that. When these fighters do get inside of these, you know, things, and they're sent to, like, these these world-class doctors that are doing these brain scans and stuff like that. Like they don't pay for that. We don't know where the money's going to say whether or not somebody is overpaid, underpaid. But what we do know is should they get more? Absolutely. But I don't think either of us have an answer as to what the amount should be. So just so we, we, uh, we're all speaking on the same page, 50,000 is, is like uh 1% of 9 million, 1.8% of 9 million. That's not a million though, but what about like? So then do that times nights? seven. Do fifty times seven because that accounts for the losers, right? So fifty times seven. You're talking about you're talking about about ten percent, and that's just the gate. That's not even including pay per view concessions or anything else. So if really the number, again, guessing. Obviously, no one is privy to that information. Let's say it's probably around seventeen million that they made. 17 to 20. For this fight? You talking about pay-per-view? The live gate was was 9.8 million or something like that. So let's say pretty much 10 million was the live gate, right? You factor in pay-per-views, you factor in concessions there, you know what I mean? Or let's just even throw off concessions and say, you know what, that's a wash between paying for the building security concessions, that's a wash. But let's just say pay-per-views right and the the gate itself let's say about 15 million mm -hmm. all right so even if you pay combined let's say uh five million you spend on the fighters like that's still 10 million for y'all how much is enough i know it's not enough Twelve thousand. <laughs> But oh. where are you going to get it from? Like, like, okay, so take the UFC out of the equation. If they go and they go to PFL, then they're going to make 8000 We don't hold the same light to these other organizations when, like, the reality is, is that they still going to get paid less over there. They're still not going to get health care. And then you say, well, they can have sponsors, but who the fuck is watching them? You think they're making as <laughs> much money with their sponsors as they are when they're inside the UFC? So I think though this what is we a have, balance. I think exactly right where it's not even necessarily I think about the number as much as about percentage, and I that's why you. like fighters with um, their gyms and their managers, it's not a set number. They don't say, "Hey, everybody, if you're in this gym, you got to come off of five racks." They say, "No, we're gonna do a percentage of what you okay. make." Your, right. your, Correct. Your, your fight. Um, your fight purses or whatever. Correct. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And same thing with different co companies. Yeah, you can't ask for a company because there's like a, a mom and pop show, let's say, or shall we say the regional show, right? Who might clear 100K. Do I expect them to pay their fighters 50K? I don't. I, I don't do that. You know, but they, there's a, a number percentage that, okay, like you need to come up off of X amount. But I'm done renting. <laughs> and, and the, the only thing that I will say to end it off is if they were to raise the minimum for the fighters, they have to get rid of, I would say over half. So right now we're sitting at close to 800 athletes. You have to. You, you just have to. Um, Why? That's just my opinion. Because over 800 fighters and you're looking at paying at the minimum 50, 50K a fight for them, you got to give them three fights a year. And then the winners of those fights, and we just talking about the minimum. We're not talking about the people that's already making. Because if if, right. if the minimum person is 50K, then your person right now who's making uh, 150, hey, the price got to go up. The price got to go yeah, up for me. I'm not just going to keep making 150 when, like, you know, Susie from Contender Series is coming inside here making 50K. Like, my price has to go up. The whole tide has to rise. You got to cut some of these fighters. You can't have over 800 fighters that you got to make uh, fights for three times if, a year. If boxers are fully disclosing that they're making 50 million a fight in the, the same higher arena. Higher upper, not the regular folks. Don't do I'm, that. I'm not saying. But even that, right? Let's just talk mm -hmm. about the creme de la creme, right? It is alleged that Connor made 50 million, you know what uh -huh. I mean? And Floyd made 100, mm -hmm. right? These are the same arenas that mm -hmm. the UFC does, right? It's not like it's, 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 you know, one's in the apex and one's doing a stadium show, right? It's a different model. Exactly. The and UFC needs to change their model. Right. And if they do change their model, guess what ends up happening? Deontay Wilder, who is currently, like, like he said, currently in, um, lawsuits because he hasn't got that pay hasn't got paid that 30 million he's supposed to make on his last fight uh your boy what's the, mm. the big dude mayweather suing these people are still suing but we don't get that on the news like espn isn't like hey remember that fight that you guys all paid to see well your fighter hasn't gotten paid that 20 30 million dollars that they said they were because they still waiting you know what i mean and like eddie hearn one of the biggest uh promoters uh for Boxing. what is it matrim matrim um he talked about it like he talked about how like yes the percentage should be up for what the UFC fighters make but that the UFC's model is more sustainable because he talked about how like these boxing companies aren't I'm just saying what the, what they saying the UFC model works for the UFC not for the fighters I'm gonna say that I agree but you know what we don't have an answer because we ain't cashing them checks yeah <laughs> And it always is always gonna get heated when it comes to money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, no matter what it is, no matter what it is. So, twenty minute hot take. Holy shit! But don't. I mean, Jace, you have to agree that if we that if we raise the amount, right, that we gotta cut some of the fighters off. Some no, of these, no, you don't. You don't. No, so. you don't. A hundred percent not. You just the UFC doesn't have to have. You know what I mean? Eight hundred percent profit. Maybe they just have five hundred percent profit. <laughs> We don't know what their profit margin is. I'm just saying. Well, you kind of do because of the stock price. But they're up under Endeavor. They don't. They don't have their own ticker. I so understand that. that but it's still is a part of it. But it's still a part of it. If the UFC was bleeding cash and then being venture capitalists as they are, they would be gone. Oh, we're only a couple years in. We're only five and a half, almost six years in. We'll see. Cool. We will see. I hope you guys enjoyed this this last hot take. Obviously, <laughs> it's hot. Obviously, we don't have the answers. That we wasn't even supposed to go that far. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. That was a solid um, 20 minutes. Yeah, you know, but at the end of the day, we don't have the answers. We don't know anything. We could all be wrong. We could all be idiots um, yeah. who are just spewing out the same rhetoric. 